My name is Fernanda Ortiz. I am auditioning for the 8th grade acting conservatory at OSHA. For my dramatic monologue, I am doing Missing Mandy. For my comedic monologue, I am doing Help Send Candy Bars, both from the book Winning Monologues for Young Actors by Peg Corrette. There is a lot of material being published that tells kids like me how to cope with the terrible things that might happen to us. If I'm walking to school and a stranger drives up and offers me a ride and says he will give me money, I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to scream and run. I'm glad I know this. I hope I don't ever have to scream and run, but I'm glad I know what to do if something bad like this should ever happen to me. However, there is one problem that none of the books ever talks about. We never have any special programs about it in school, and there aren't any public service announcements on TV. It's a serious problem though, and widespread. I'm not the only one trying to cope without any help. Plenty of my friends are suffering too. The problem is this. How does a kid like me protect herself when her mother decides to go on a diet. It's terrible. It's a real shock when this happens and nobody ever prepared me for it. One day, I was able to open our refrigerator and find cold fried chicken and chocolate pudding. The next day, I found nothing but raw cauliflower and yogurt. Yuck. A grown girl could starve to death eating raw cauliflower and yogurt. I told my mom I don't want her to die. I said I love her just the way she is. And she said I'm very sweet. Besides, I said, most of my friend's moms are fat too. I don't think I should have added that last part. She quit telling me how sweet I am and started doing sit-ups. Our cookie jar is empty. There aren't even any crumbs at the bottom that will stick to my finger if I lick it and rub it around on the inside. I ask, what good is a cookie jar if there are never any cookies in it? And I got some song and dance about reducing tooth decay. Heck, my teeth are in good shape. It's my stomach that needs help. For dinner, for dinner last night, we had baked fish, green beans, and a sliced tomato. I could have as much as I wanted, but who wants seconds of baked fish? We used to have a goodie drawer. It was just what the name implies, a drawer in the kitchen where we kept our goodies. There were usually peanuts and often pretzels, and sometimes even a bag of candy bars. I love candy bars. I adore candy bars. At least I used to. Candy bars have been banned from our house ever since mom put on her navy suit and couldn't get the pants zipped. I suggested that we buy a padlock and put it on the goodie drawer and everyone but mom would know the combination. If you buy the candy bars, I said, I will lock them up for you. She wouldn't do it. She said she doesn't want to ruin the kitchen drawer by putting a lock on it. But I think she doesn't want anyone else eating candy bars if she can't have any. It is painful to have my mother on a diet. My whole life has changed. Why don't the school counselors or the child welfare people do anything to help? As far as I'm concerned, you can forget all about the instructions on what to do if somebody tries to abduct me. Instead, tell me what to do if there is nothing in the house to eat. Last year on the first day of school, Mandy and I walked together. I miss Mandy a lot. It might not be so bad if I could write to her and get letters back from her. 
But to have her just leave like she did and not know where she went, well, that part's hard. I always wonder what would have happened if I told sooner. Would she still have moved away and not let anyone know where? Last year, when school started, I didn't know anything about Mandy's trouble. She never told anyone, not even me. I thought she always wore long sleeve shirts because she liked them. I didn't know she wanted to cover up the bruises. One day, Mandy came to school with her hand bandaged. She'd burned it baking cookies. That day, our teacher, Mrs. Swenson, asked me to stay after school. When we were alone, she asked me if I thought Mandy had really burned herself baking cookies. I told her Mandy wouldn't pretend to be burned if she wasn't. Mrs. Swenson said she was sure the burn was real, but she wasn't convinced it was accidental. I didn't know what she meant. And then one night, Mandy was supposed to come over to, come over to my house so we could do our homework together and she didn't come. When I went over to her house to get her, I could hear her crying. What's worse, I heard why she was crying. I stood there on Mandy's front porch in the dark and I could hear her daddy beating on her something fierce. I got all sick feeling inside and I didn't know what to do. Finally, I pounded hard on Mandy's door and pretty soon her daddy opened the door. When I saw him standing there, looking down at me with sweat standing out in little droplets on his upper lip, I couldn't say anything. I just stood there, my knees shaking and stared at him. He told me Mandy wasn't feeling well and for me to go on home. I did. I sat on my bed in the dark but I couldn't stop shaking, even after I crawled under the covers and put my pillow over my head. I stayed home from school the next day. I told Mama that I felt sick and that was the truth. Mama asked me what was wrong, but I couldn't tell her. Would things have turned out differently if I had? When I went back to school, Mandy was there and neither of us said anything about that night. A few weeks later, Mandy arrived with a cast on her arm. She said she'd fallen down her basement steps, but there was an odd, faraway look in her eyes when she told me. That afternoon, I stayed after school and told Mrs. Swenson about standing on Mandy's front porch and hearing her daddy womp on her. Mrs. Swenson just kept nodding at me as if she wasn't at all surprised and said I'd done right to tell her. I don't know if it was right or not. A police car stopped by Mandy's house that afternoon, but there was nobody home. And when the police went back the next day, Mandy was gone. She and her daddy must have moved in the night because nobody saw them leave and nobody knows where they went. Mrs. Swenson isn't my teacher anymore, and this year I walked to school alone. I hope Mandy isn't walking alone. Wherever she is, I hope she has a friend to talk with. And most of all, I hope she is wearing a shirt with short sleeves.